Second question from the Discord this week. Canada is set to allow medical assistance in dying, MAID, for individuals suffering from mental illness. Plus, doctors in Canada are being told that they should suggest MAID to eligible patients before the patient brings it up. Thoughts? Um, it's two very different questions, yeah. right? It's, or it's two very different policies. I believe this falls under the heading of what could possibly go right. Um, With regard to the second? Nope. Okay. I would say there is, I am not arguing that there is no abstract case to be made for instances. The problem is once you create the category, it's a little like the death penalty, right? There are cases in which the death penalty makes sense. The problem is, in order for the death penalty to be applied in those cases, you have to have the death penalty, and then the death penalty gets used in all kinds of cases where it doesn't make sense, right. and in fact, you end up putting innocent people to death. Right. So the problem is, if you create... And being opposed to the death penalty doesn't mean that you think that there is no crime uh, that doesn't necessarily warrant the right punishment. There, there, are, there are crimes for which it's the right punishment. The problem is there's no mechanism that's sufficiently careful that can be trusted with deciding when you've got such a case. Right. And the same thing can be said here. Certainly there are people with a very valid argument, just as there are people with a very valid argument against um, uh, abortion, right? That mm -hmm. is to say, a logically consistent argument about the reason that it should never be available. Mm -hmm. I don't think they are right. Yeah. But there will be people who make the same kind of argument here, which is that this is not for humans to decide. Um, and... I think the fact that those people will typically be very much a minority tells us the answer, that actually we have to decide. But in this case, there's no mechanism to do it. Um, this will be abused. That means people will be put to death who were coerced. And So again, though, there's two different things. So medical assistance in dying for people suffering from mental illness is what right. I thought you were talking about there. But now you segued without saying that you were segueing into talking about um, <clears throat> doctors in Canada being told that they should suggest it. Well, I don't see these things as very distinct because the question is what happens in the case that they don't suggest it, right? In other words, how is that policed exactly, right? Can a doctor hint? but not suggest in the case that suggestion is not on the table. So in other words, my point is they're opening up a mechanism and a use case, which is mentally ill people. And mm -hmm. the question is, well, what happens then? W yeah. what, what becomes fashionable? What loophole? I mean, you know, we already have a, an effective loophole, which I believe must exist, but because it's a loophole and not a policy, the thing that is done when people have reached the very end of their lives and in effect they are not allowed to be euthanized but they can be treated for pain and painkillers can euthanize so as long as your intent is uh, to uh, to reduce their pain you yep. can effectively kill them yep. that thing obviously has a set of scenarios for which you want to have it available, right? Why put somebody through the torment of the very final stage of some terribly painful disease mm -hmm. when the end is unavoidable, yep. right? But what happens once you have that mechanism available, right, is it opens an opportunity for abuse of the worst kind. So I think the long and short of it is um, even those of us who believe that there's probably an argument to be made in some cases, should be well aware that the abuse of this principle in this case is a huge hazard and almost there's almost no way this could be deployed that we won't see abuse. Yeah. Um, I think that's true. Uh, I guess I think that's true for medical assistance and dying for physical illness as well. Um, but I fall in a, in a different place on on that and 
Whereas it might seem like, well, physical versus mental illness, it leaves a physical trace, you can find the thing. That presumes that Western medicine is right about a whole lot of things. And it also presumes that pain leaves a mark, right? So different people experience pain very differently. And uh, it really is assessment. There is no objective measure of the amount of pain you're experiencing. You know, doctors can look at the amount to which a person is riddled with cancer of a particular sort and say, they're in a lot of pain of that much, we can be sure. But, you know, some people with some, you know, particular pain sensitivities and experiences in life and other things may experience exactly the same diagnosis and, you know, imaging that is true, what is a true physical representation of their body differently. So I, I feel like already we're on that slippery slope with, uh, what is the acronym MAID, Medical Assistance in Dying for Physical Ailments. And um, I think you're right. I think I agree that it becomes too slippery for mental illness. And certainly that doctors proposing it is, is obscene. Uh, but it's not a clean break. It's well, all, we're, already, we're already well into slippery territory. If, you know, if, if I am already well into... Touch my mic. I am well. I am already well in the slippery territory. Uh, if I say actually, I, I am in favor of uh, you know death with dignity for those who choose it if they are in extreme physical pain. Uh, well, okay. I think I think my position is not well represented. Then um, I would argue that there is a fundamental human right not to exist. Mm -hmm. Right, and that nobody can tell you that you have to exist. Now, this runs into trouble. Does that mean that anybody who commits a heinous crime and goes to prison has the right to opt out? Yeah. Presumably not. Mm -hmm. um, so that right then to not exist can't be absolute. Um, but I believe it's pretty close to it. On the other hand, I believe that lots of people temporarily feel that that's what they want, right. and that we have an obligation not to... Um, uh, to allow those temporary feelings to, you know. And a physical illness. We have a greater understanding that we currently think is accurate, and I, am, I have a high certainty that it's accurate, that a physical illness, we can tell that's, that is terminal, right. as opposed to a mental illness, which, in, I mean, in fact, many mental illnesses um, abate with age. Right. Right. So the, my concern here is the medicalization of that right. Mm -hmm. The right exists. Mm -hmm. I believe there's ambiguity. The problem is we are living in an era in which the Hippocratic Oath is back on its heels. Yeah. Right? Lots of doctors have been violating the Hippocratic Oath and their obligation to informed consent. And so the point is the most basic principles that make medicine thinkable are in jeopardy. At that moment, you want to inter you want to medicalize the question of yeah. whether to be or not to be. That doesn't seem like a reasonable thing to do. It seems like a gateway to a, uh, a an unthinkable realm. Now, there has always been a concern that the people uh, the people who cannot manage to exercise their right not to exist and therefore need help are really the gray area. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I don't know that anybody's figured out how you create an opportunity for somebody who's truly facing uh, an unthinkable future. Um, and to, can't accomplish it themselves. Right, how you do that. If it's not medical, what is it exactly? Right. Um, so I don't know the answer to that question. I will say that there is a case, uh, an Evergreen student who neither of us knew who committed suicide uh, while we were professors. Mm. And she documented her thought process extensively mm. online, which made for excruciating reading. Um, but I, it is a case that has always stuck out to me because the hell that she was living in was so unthinkably terrible that I totally understood why this was her conclusion. And it wasn't that she rushed to it, right? She had been raped 
and was basically incapable of controlling, she'd been raped as a child, she had been incapable of controlling the ongoing terror that this induced. Um, and, you know, she described, uh, like, dreams in which she was chewing nails and glass and that these this was just an every night phenomenon. And so, anyway, I, I, it did sort of wake me up to what a purely mental anguish could look like that would make the case. That said, I, you know, this person sought help. It didn't work. I f- There's a lot of bad help out there. Yeah, but I felt at the time, you know, I was reading about it, I learned about her after she died. Mm-hmm. And I felt that it was a terrible, terrible tragedy that nobody figured out how to get her to the help that I assume must exist. Mm-hmm. But the, I was also left with the answer, how do you know it exists? How do you know yeah. that this person's trauma is reversible? That's a kind of faith on your part. Mm. Um, so anyway, that's that's where I was left with it. Um, but I think the problem is you're you're combining two realms here. One is a philosophical realm, right? Do you have the right not to be if you find life terrible? I feel that you do. Yeah. Do we have to provide a mechanism so everybody can exercise that right? Maybe we do. But if we provide that mechanism, what will it be used for? It will be used to off people who wouldn't exercise that right, so we can't have the mechanism. Yeah. And I don't know the resolution for those puzzle pieces, but I know they're all on the table. Yeah. No, and yeah. It's 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 beyond slippery. Yeah. Yeah.